Okay. Okay. Um, so um, we stopped at um, the teaching of the Lord Jesus, where he's having this conversation with um, Nicodemus, and he's explaining uh, about spiritual matters, and he's talking about how the Holy Spirit is the one who causes spiritual birth. A person is born again because of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Yeah. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll come to that. But uh, anyway, so the question is, uh, how do we identify uh, the work of the Holy Spirit, or how do we distinguish between the work of the Holy Spirit and the work of the evil spirit or a counterfeit spirit? Right. So we know that. Um, uh, anyway, actually, when we study about the teachings of the Holy Spirit we see that what the Holy Spirit does, or what does he do, uh, which is very different from uh, an evil spirit or familiar spirit, right? So we know that the work of the, uh, you know, the counterfeit spirit is to, is to copy something which is of the genuine, okay? So, uh, but also it always is counterproductive because it's not with the good intentions. It's also always to, because if you look at John 10.10, 10, we see what, the um, role description or the mission statement of Jesus. Okay, the shepherd he comes in order for us to have life and life in its fullness. Okay, so that's the that's that's the goal. How can my children? How can my sheep have life and life in its fullness? The Lord Jesus also says that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Okay, so so that's the thing. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So it could be whatever, you know, that's one basic guideline to use for discerning. Okay. Is it giving life and life in its fullness? Or is there stealing, killing, and destroying that is happening? So straight away, if they're stealing, killing, destroying, hey, I've experienced something, but, you know, the spirit with which it is coming, you know, it's, it's there's something that I'm losing, right? Uh, or there's some something that, that goes out of me. There's some, you know, there's some setback. Then we know that it is not of God. But the Lord Jesus also talks about the Holy Spirit. He says the Spirit and the Word agree. Spirit of the Word agree, meaning the work of the Holy Spirit will not contradict with the Word of God. Right? The Word of God is our standard, which means righteousness, holiness. It will not contradict. He will not contradict, right? So whatever work he is doing, he will not contradict the work uh, or the word of God. The Holy Spirit will also exalt Jesus because he will testify. He will take of what is Jesus, of Jesus, and make it known to us. He will exalt. He will lift up Jesus. We're going to look at all these scriptures. He will lift up Jesus. So that's another thing, the third one, to see, okay, is this counterfeit? Is Jesus being glorified? Or is man being glorified, right? Or is the person who is receiving the miracle or the work of the Spirit, is that person being glorified? Is Jesus being glorified, right? So all these indicators are there to help us discern between the work of the flesh, the work of the evil spirit, and the work of God's Holy Spirit. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so uh, see, another common question when we actually look at this passage is people ask, Especially when, like Joseph asked the question about water baptism, when they look at these verses, they ask the question, you know, is this referring to water baptism? Right? I don't know if anybody felt that way. Unless one is born of water. So definitely, you know, in water uh, means baptism because you're immersed, you're coming out. And so this scripture does not talk about water baptism. We need to be very clear. Why? Because the Lord Jesus is actually explaining about what is of the flesh and what is of the spirit. Now, if you look at these verses, look at um, you know verse verse five onwards, right? 
the Lord Jesus says, um, uh, sorry, verse 3 onwards, he says, unless one is born again. And then he goes on to explain what is born again. Born of the Spirit, unless one is born of water and the Spirit. And then he goes on to distinguish between what is born, being born of the flesh and being born of the Spirit. He says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, meaning it is natural, it is fleshly. It cannot be something that is born of the Spirit. But that which is born of the Holy Spirit, which means by the work of the Holy Spirit, that is Spirit. Okay, so he's actually distinguish, be, distinguishing between what is of the flesh, what is of the spirit. Okay, so he's not referring to water baptism. And in any case, water baptism does not save man. Water baptism is a symbolic proclamation of something that has happened deeper. It is a symbolic outward, um, you can say, proclamation, declaration of a significant inward change. That's water baptism, right? So uh, just to clarify that. Okay, let's look at John chapter 4 and verses 23 and 24. The Lord Jesus is saying, but the, uh, this is in conversation with the woman at the well, okay? Um, Samaritan woman. So the Lord is saying, the hour is coming. Maybe we'll, we'll just read from verse 20 onwards. Um, the, the lady the says, you know, our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. So Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain, when you, when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Verse 24, God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Okay, So the Lord is talking about worship and the coming time, you know, talking to the uh, Samaritan woman, saying, this is how it will be. Right? That Worship, the fa this is the worship that the Father is seeking. Okay, he, he, he says, this is the kind of, in fact, he's saying, that the Father is seeking the worshipper. Okay, these are the worshippers. And he's also saying, this true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Okay, so what is this spirit and in truth? Okay, truth is, Truly, without any pretense, not pretending, not hypocritical, according to the word of God, because the Lord Jesus says, thy word is truth. So all that you know, refers to how I should worship in truth, as prescribed in the word and so on. Right? What is of the spirit? Right? Those who will worship uh, God, worship the Father, will worship in spirit and truth, which means that out of our innermost being, the spirit that is born again because of the Spirit. From our spirit we worship. Or as led by the Holy Spirit in our spirit. right? So we will worship the Father in such a manner. In spirit and in truth. Okay? And the Lord Jesus also makes a reference. John chapter 6. And um, yeah, Shani, you have a question. Yeah. I just had a question in terms of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So I know if, if somebody does that, does that mean that, you know, it's unforgivable of God? Does that mean that they go to hell? And another question that I have is I know you were saying in terms of when you're born again, that's when like um, God could kind of communicate with us once we're born again. But also, but I'm just kind of curious because in the Bible, it shows how um, God communicates to Saul. And I've also heard people that said before they got born again that God communicates with them and then they got born again. So that's why I just wanted some clarification on those. Uh, sorry, the last part I didn't get. Can you just... Uh, can so you just the go? last part was that I just want to make sure I'm understanding. I know you said that when somebody's born again, that's when they can kind of communicating with God for what you, um, for what you told me. But in the Bible, it shows in terms of, I guess, God speaking to Saul. And then he, you know, then they changed the name to Paul. So that's, I mean, he was a non-believer. And I also heard some people say that God spoke to them. And then after that, then they got born again. 
So I was kind of at this point, I want some clarifications. You were saying that once you're born again, that's what he speaks to you. But I was kind of confused because I know that uh, from the reference of the Bible with Saul and then other people telling me to, that's just one of clarification. Mm -hmm. You're talking about uh, Saul who became Paul, right? The apostle. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So the thing is, um, so again, you know, going back to um, the words of the Lord. So um, the Lord says, as the wind blows, you don't see it where it comes, where it goes. So are those who are born of the Spirit. So which means the work of the Spirit. Well, uh, there are some times when you can say, okay, this is when he was born again, she was born again. And there are some times when, you know, going by external observation, because we see in the natural, uh, you know, maybe they change life, etc., speech, etc. And then we decide, okay, the person is born again now. Now, um, so we really don't know. But actually, if you look at, um, uh, you know, in the book of Acts and you see, uh, Saul's response, right? Um, I think that's uh, that's an indicator. Again, um, so Saul, uh, when he falls off, you know, he fell. He falls to the ground. Acts chapter nine and verse four says, and then the Lord asks the question, Saul, why are you uh, persecuting me? And he says, Who are you, Lord? You know, uh, and he says, I am Jesus. And verse 6, he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Okay, so the first question, who are you, Lord? But he's again, you know, he's, I, I guess his heart is open. He's saying, who are you, Lord? Because it's a supernatural encounter. And then he says, what do you want me to do? And the Lord says, arise, go to the city. You'll be told what to do. And that's exactly what he does. And when Ananias comes and, and talks to him, he says, brother Saul, it means, brother, you're, you know, you are in the Lord, brother Saul. So, I don't know, maybe as he was falling off the animal, <laughs> maybe he got saved. We don't know, right? But the fact is that something supernatural happened in his heart. And, uh, you know, he is, is in his conversation with the Lord. It says, you know, he's, he's just saying, acknowledging Jesus as Lord. Uh, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. You know, uh, whom you are persecuting, and he says, "What do you want me to do, Lord?" So yes, the one who was he was persecuting, and you know, uh, doing all kinds of things to those who proclaim the name of Jesus. Now he's here, Saul, saying, "Same person, thing. What do you want me to do, Lord?" Okay, so that's an indicator of change heart. It just happened in an instant. Um, so we, yeah. So that, that's what I would say, Shani. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, Gertrude. Yeah, that means uh, Apostle Paul was baptized with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and not of water. Well, um, see, when we okay, when we read um, Acts chapter nine, okay, yeah. when we read Acts chapter nine and um, is it Acts chapter 9? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm just, just give me a minute. Acts chapter 9. And uh, it says here, um, verse 17, And Ananias went and entered the house, laid hands on him, brother Saul, and he says, you know, uh, receive, your spirit, receive your sight and be filled with the Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. He received his sight at once, and he arose, and he was baptized. So, and when he had received food, he was strengthened, and Saul spent some time, etc. So um, obviously it's referring to how Saul was filled with the Spirit. He was baptized in the Holy Spirit, right? Um, and the yeah. and, and has ministered. So, but we don't see any direct reference to uh, him being baptized in water. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, but the fact is that he writes in depth in in, in the book of Romans chapter six, he talks about water baptism. If you notice, you know, Romans chapter Six, he talks about water baptism, and then in First Corinthians also he talks about um, you know when he's establishing um, certain wrong practices that were happening when he when he's clarifying there also he talks about uh, some kind of a baptism that was happening there in Corinth. So uh, so we know that um, you know the early church did baptize. He was aware of the Lord's commission to go preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He was aware of that. 
and um, so he we can. Himself was not baptized in water. There is no mention in the Bible. There's no mention. Yeah, there's no mention. But since he taught, since he gave revelation about water baptism, etc., we yeah. can assume. Yeah, we can. We can. We can conclude that yes, uh, he also was, um, you know, baptized in water. We can conclude. We can infer. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, thank. You. Okay. Shall we move on? Okay, so we looked at uh, John chapter 4. Let's go to John chapter 6 and verse 63. Okay, John chapter 6, verse 63, the Lord says, The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay, um, It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So he's talking about the work of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit again, and he's saying the spirit gives life life okay the spirit gives life and um, maybe we can look at uh, uh, you know there are the different words that are used to uh, describe life i'm just going to just pull that out um john chapter 6 verse 63 just give me a minute yeah and uh, okay so so John chapter 6, 63, the Lord is saying that it is the Spirit who gives life. Okay, I just want to double check one thing. Because when, whenever we see the encounter the word life in English, right, we can, in the Greek, it could mean several things. One is bios, okay, meaning biological life. Okay, something has biological life. It's uh, plants have biological life. They are you know, growing. Human beings have biological life. They are breathing in oxygen, breathing out carbon dioxide, right? So they have biological life. And the Lord here is talking about Zoe, which is God kind of life. Okay? The very life that God has, the very life and nature of God. Okay, So it's not talking about biological life. So biological life comes to an end. We know that. There's an expiry date. There's a time when... People are not able to breathe in, <laughs> breathe out. Everything comes to an end. So the Lord is talking about how the Holy Spirit gives life. Okay, so let's look at 63 again. So it says, um, you know, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The flesh profits nothing in the sense, that, you know, it's yes, it's in the process of decay, etc. It will come to an end. But the Holy Spirit is the one who gives this God kind of life. Zoe, God kind of life. It's very different from bios, which is biological life, okay? Which is spiritual life. He's saying, you know, he's the one who gives you spiritual life. He's the one who gives or causes you to be born again. The spirit gives life, okay? And he also goes on to say, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. In other words, the words also, you know, they produce life in you. They give spiritual life. So you see, you know, Hebrews 4, 16, we've read that saying that the word of God is powerful, living, right? Sharper than any two-edged sword and on and on. So he's saying, the, my words, who is this speaking? Jesus, in the beginning was the, the word, the eternal word, right? The eternal word is saying, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and life, right? They produce spiritual life. These are not just ordinary words to just say, okay, admire and say, wow, that was wonderful. But it's something deeper happens when we receive his word. We know when you're studying about faith, it produces faith, right? Nothing else can produce faith but the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what is happening? There's spiritual life happening when we receive. Something happens in our spirit. The Lord Jesus said, man shall not live by Bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He's talking about the rhema, every rhema that comes from God. What is happening? Again, spiritual life is produced, right? Man shall not live. Of course, man can live by bread. You give him bread and water, he can live. He might get tired of bread. Right? Give me something else. But he's not talking about biological lives. You know, a man cannot live. A spiritual life cannot happen unless... You know, he receives and his spiritual life, meaning there is nourishment that he receives from the word. So he's saying the spirit gives life. The word, my words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Okay. 
so the lord is packing you know just giving a revelation about the work of the holy spirit okay so the more we read this we see wow i need the holy spirit right i need the holy spirit to just exist as a believer i need the spirit to you know to quicken the word and produce life in me i need the holy spirit okay um okay charles so you do you have a question i see both those um what we had um okay i'll just move on chapter 7 verse 38 okay um so chapter 7 verse 38 um it's a uh, it's a parallel to um, chapter 4 also where he talks about um, the work of the spirit and here chapter 7 the lord is saying he who believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water okay he's talking about rivers of living water in chapter 4 uh, the lord is referring to uh, the work of a spirit and uh, in the conversation chapter 4 and verse 14 the water that i give it will become in him a fountain of life springing up into everlasting life and here he's talking about he who believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water some translation have it as innermost being belly and so on right out of his heart will flow rivers of living water what was he talking about verse 39 says but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive for the holy spirit was not yet given because jesus was not yet glorified okay so here is the lord saying this is what will happen he who believes in me out of his heart will flow rivers of living water rivers of life right rivers of living water and this he spoke concerning the holy spirit so he is saying the work of the holy spirit will be like this it will be like rivers of water living water life giving water flowing out of your heart he's saying this is about the holy spirit meaning the ministry of the holy spirit will be in a believer will be such when the rivers flow or the, the work of the holy spirit will be in such a manner where it will be impacting it will be life changing for others right he will flow through you the rivers will flow through you and you know you know if you can imagine a natural river it's you know sometimes we think of a river as a small stream but a river can be very very powerful a torrent right and and uh, you know we use uh, we capture hydroelectric power hydroelectricity from from such you know forces of flow of rivers right so a river can be you know it just can just break through barriers um, wherever the river flows it's fertile there's a lot of life that is there you know and um, wherever there's a river there's there could be human settlement around the river because you have access to water and so on right so saying this is what will happen uh rivers um is flowing so okay so shani's question is so we will see miracle signs and wonders because the river is flowing yes because that is the work of the holy spirit right that's what we study that's what we learned and so it's all coming together right john chapter 14 where jesus says hey what i do you will do because i go to my father because when i go to the father i will send the comforter or send the helper and who is the helper the holy spirit right and he's saying uh, you know here he's just foretelling and uh, john is just uh, recording it says this is spoken concerning the spirit because the holy spirit was not yet given because jesus was not yet glorified what did he refer to you look at those words because jesus was not yet glorified meaning what does that mean sorry he's not ascended you know the lord jesus said father glorify me with the glory that i had with you before the world was right and now he's after resurrecting after from the dead 
he is ascending to be with the Father and uh, to be glorified with the Father. The Father and the Son be glorified, the same kind of glory. And here he's saying, you know, he had not been glorified yet. Okay? So there's something that's happening when Jesus is glorified. He's sending the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is referred referring to here as the rivers of living water flowing out of the heart of the believer. Okay, so is that exciting or not? Okay, I think online students, I, I, maybe you're screaming with your mics muted. Uh, In-person students are screaming on the inside. I can't hear anything. You know, it's very exciting, absolutely exciting, because it's for every believer. It's for every believer, right? And the so, which means that the life of the believer is not a boring, you know, dull existence. Right? Exciting, challenging, obviously, difficult, maybe sometimes, right? But it's exciting. It's as exciting as a life-giving river, right? because God wants to do that in us. And through us, okay. So John chapter fourteen, and uh, you know this is something that we uh, said uh, that we read just now. John chapter fourteen and verse sixteen. I will pray the Father, and He will give you another Helper, meaning another just like me, who is different from me, who apart from me, another Helper that He may abide with you forever. Okay, the Spirit of Truth, Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Truth. Whom the world cannot receive, but it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Okay. So the Lord is, uh, if you look at verse 16, he says something very, very important. He says, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Okay. So sometimes we do have questions, and okay. we'll come back to that this verse again. The question is this. So suppose I sin, not as an unbeliever, as a believer. As I, as I sin, okay, I commit an act of sin, not unknowingly, knowingly. Okay, Will the Holy Spirit leave me? Will the Holy Spirit say, okay, Jekma, you sinned, you knew it was wrong, but still you still sinned. Uh, I'm going to take leave of you now. I cannot stay with you. You grieved me. Um, so I'm just checking out. I'm going. Bye bye. Okay. So does the Holy Spirit do that? What do you think? Does the Holy Spirit leave? Does the Holy Spirit come? And then does he leave again? Okay. Um, let's hear from the online students. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, please. Um, who's that? Uh, no, Pastor. That? Yeah, Shani. No. No. And also, okay. when Jesus died, he died for all of our sins, past, present, and future. So that's another mm. reason why, too. Okay. Yeah. Then what about... Uh, okay. Let, let me just... Pull up that verse. We sing that verse, right? Um, you know which one I'm talking about. Let's say, um, oops. You know, Psalmist, he sings and then he says, um, Oh, okay. Uh, maybe somebody can help me. What is that verse? Oh, yeah, uh, it's here. Um, Psalm 51, right? Psalm 51 and verse 10. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Uh, do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Right? And uh, we know we sing that song. I don't know if you remember, it's an old song, right? Take not your Holy Spirit from me. So, so what did the psalmist mean then? 
So we we use this scripture, right? Sometimes say the Holy Spirit is not happy with you because you're not living a holy life. It's time for the Holy Spirit to go. Cyril, once you adopt a child of God, Holy Spirit does not leave you. Yes, He abides in us. Yeah. So, so when we look at Isaiah, I'm sorry, Psalm 51, verse 10, we 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 realize that this is a different dispensation, right? It is. Uh, it's in the Old Testament times. It's before the cross, right? It's before the resurrection, the ascension of the Lord. So it's before. It's a different dispensation where we learned that the Holy Spirit moved in a different way. Same Holy Spirit, but he moved in a different way. How? He would come upon people and they would do or carry out the assignment, maybe convey the message, do the works that he wanted them to do. He would come upon the people, the prophets, the people of God, and they would encourage, they would prophesy, and and they had all these supernatural experiences. Okay, so so we know that it's a it's in a different dispensation. Okay, Charles, thank you. Old Testament. So he did not, you know, dwell among or dwell in a person. Right now, today, in we are in a different dispensation, where we are living in a time which is after the cross and after all this has happened. And the promise of the Holy Spirit from the words of the Lord Jesus is this, that the promise, the Father will come, the Father's uh, promise is this, that he will give you another helper that he may abide with you for ever, that he may stay with you. Okay. Now, that's not a guarantee or license for me to go and live in whatever way I want to live. No, the Holy Spirit is going to convict the Holy Spirit is going to be grieved. You know, when I do certain things, he's, yeah, I'm, I might resist the work of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is going to make me or lead me in holiness, into you know, the works of God, into the things out of the flesh and into life itself. Because he gives life. That's going to be the, that's the ministry, because that's why he's called the helper. Right? He's going to help. He will convict. And when he convicts, Oh, it's be like no other reasoning can convict. Deep within, you can't shake it off, right? He's going to convict. He's going to lead, and he's going to lead you into life. He's going to help or empower us to put away the works of the flesh. Right? Romans eight talks about that. If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, right? sometimes we have this understanding. Oh, I need to put to death. And then the Holy Spirit will help. You know, I, I need to do this. I need to clean up my act. And then the Holy Spirit will come and he will stay and he will help. Well, it's, it's the other way around. Right? Scripture says that if by the Spirit, with the help of the Spirit, with the help of the helper, you put to death the deeds of the body, which means he's going to convict, he's going to empower, he's going to give strategies how to do that. right? And you will live okay right so that settles that question you know he stays with us no, no matter what he stays with us but he's going to lead us he's going to convict us now his voice may become you know we might actually dull you know we might become dull to his voice because our conscience could be seared our hearts could be hardened right that could happen but he's going to you know, orchestrate, he's going to lead, he's going to speak to us um, and, and lead us back to the Father. Just like how, you know, uh, we learn about that in the, in the parable that the Lord taught about the prodigal son. Okay, right. Okay, so John chapter 15, verse 26. Um, when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Okay, so I think that was, uh, brother asked that question, right? How do we distinguish? How do I find out? Verse 1, he proceeds from me. I'm sending him, Lord Jesus says. He proceeds from the Father, and he will testify. What does testify mean? Um, to speak about in a simple way, yeah. To witness, to to say, yeah, this is true. Okay, 
uh, I'm giving my testimony or I'm, I'm testifying against someone or, you know, for someone, I'm saying that this is true. Yes, this is true. Whatever this person said is true. Right? So the Holy Spirit will testify, like you said, Serene, he will speak about, he will testify about Jesus. He'll say, this is Jesus. Listen to him. This is the work of Jesus. This is, these are the words of Jesus. This is the call of Jesus. Right? You need to listen to him. Okay? So he will testify of Jesus. Right? And then um, lastly, John chapter 16 and verse 7. Uh, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Okay, so he will, what, what will he do? He will convict. He will bring conviction. Right? He will bring people to a point of saying, okay, yes, what I'm doing is wrong. You know, uh, maybe others could have reasoned, others could have said all that, but the Holy Spirit will bring conviction. He will bring conviction of sin. He will bring conviction of righteousness. Now, what is right? Which is the right thing. He will bring conviction of righteousness and he will bring conviction of even judgment, right? So um, that's what verse 7 says. He will, uh, and eight, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment uh, and, and so on. Okay, let's look at verse 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare to you all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said to you, he will take of mine and declare to you. Okay, another facet of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's important for us to understand. Okay, so, so it, then we will not have any confusion. Okay, now he's called the Spirit of Truth, and what does he do? He will guide us into all truth. Okay, what is truth? Whatever that is, you know, uh, apart from the lie, even if certain things are mixed and look like truth, you know, he will lead us into. He will guide us into all truth. He will not force us. He will not push us, but he will guide us. So what is the difference? Guiding. Have you ever guided someone? What did you do? Yeah? You showed. You now somebody comes and asks you for directions. Sir, which way do I go to the railway station? How do I go there? And then you say, okay, you take this, go straight, take the second left and uh, third right. You reach the station. You gave direction. Now it depends on the person receiving direction to actually do it, right? Because the person can receive direction and say, "Oh, maybe I, I'll take some other way." He can do that, right? So he will guide. He will not force. He will guide. If there's something that we understand about the Holy Spirit, oh, if there's any manipulation, if there's any forcing, if there's any you know intimidation that's happening. That's not the work of the Holy Spirit. Maybe that's just human manipulation, you know, trying to bring condemnation and fear and so on. Well, the Holy Spirit will guide. What will he guide us into? He will guide us into all truth. Right? Whatever. And then this is another distinguishing factor. What is of, um, you know, how do we distinguish Holy Spirit's work, um, evil spirit's work? He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. He will tell you things to come, which means that he's going to, he, in his ministry, there is this foretelling aspect of his ministry. He's going to tell us of things to come. Okay, this is what is going to come. This is what is going to happen. So he knows the future. He will tell you of things to come. So best thing is to commit our life to, Je life to God. And commune with the Holy Spirit. Have fellowship with the Holy Spirit because he knows the end from the beginning and he will tell you of things to come. Okay, then he will glorify, verse 14, he will glorify me. He will glorify who? He will glorify Jesus. He will not put down Jesus. He will glorify Jesus. 
right? He will glorify, he'll lift up Jesus, magnify Jesus so that Jesus is glorified. So he'll take of what is his and he will share it with us, declare it to us. And um, it could be revelation, it could be understanding, it could be, um, you know, everything that is of the Lord, the plans that he has for us, he will take that and he will declare it to us. Okay, So we see that this is a wonderful um, ministry, a wonderful way in which the Holy Spirit works. Right? So do we need him? Do we need his ministry? Absolutely. No, we cannot go through life without acknowledging the work of the Holy Spirit, without inviting more and more of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Okay? Um, okay. So let's look at uh, one more, and then we'll close. I think we have about, yeah. OK. So um, we see, uh, let's, let's go to 1 Timothy 3 and verse 16. And um, so it talks about the work of the Holy Spirit. And just like how we looked at uh, Trinity and understood the work of the Holy Spirit, I think we looked at this verse also. Right? First Timothy 3, verse 16. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in, in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among Gentiles, believed on um, in the world, received up in glory. It was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit. So it talks about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, um, you know, of the work of justification. Okay, we'll learn more, but this is something that the Holy Spirit does, justif the work of justification. Um, okay, uh, we, will, we will actually go into a depth of this when we study the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. Okay, let's look at Hebrews 9 and verse 14. Okay, so he talks about the work of the Holy Spirit in, um, in the death and redemption uh, of, uh, uh, or, or, in the resurrection of the Lord, right? How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Okay. So the writer of Hebrews is asking the question, saying, how much more shall the blood of Christ uh, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Okay. So the blood of Christ will do that. But in that he's saying, who referring to Christ, through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God. Through the eternal spirit, which means through the work, through the ministry, through the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, we, we learned that everything that he did, how did he do it? He did by the anointing, which means the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit. So also, when he offered himself as a living sacrifice, the yeah, scripture testifies that Christ offered himself as a sacrifice through the eternal spirit. Right? Not only did he minister in signs, wonders, and miracles, but when he gave himself up as a living sacrifice, as a sacrifice, as the perfect sacrifice, he did it through the Holy Spirit, through the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Right. Then um, 1 Peter 3 and verse 18. 1 Peter 3 and verse um, 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. So it talks about the resurrection, talks about the Lord being brought to life, and that was by the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So we see all this as the work or the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus, uh, in death, uh, in offering, in, in bringing him to offer himself, uh, and in the death and the resurrection. Okay? And we see the, his ministry just before the resurrection as well. I'm sorry, uh, after the resurrection, before the ascension as well. Okay? Let's uh, look at those verses also, and then we'll close. Okay, so let's look at John 20, verse 22. John 20, verse 22. Um, when he had said this, okay, so let's look at verse 21. So Jesus said to them again, peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Verse 22, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. 
And he says, if you forgive the sins of many, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Okay. So verse 22, it says, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So this is something, something unique that he did in the life of the disciples. Okay. So when we're studying about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we will again refer to this verse. You know, he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. So now this is after the resurrection. He's not yet gone to be, uh, he's not yet ascended. And he's saying, he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. So one can infer or one can conclude that the disciples were born again at this point, that their spirit received life at this point. At this point, um, we can infer. Okay, um, okay. So, can we cast out an evil spirit without baptism? Without, I think, what, what we, without the baptism, meaning um, without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Well, the thing is that the. Why why do evil spirits leave? It's because of the authority that is in Jesus' name. It's because of the work of the Holy Spirit in their life. So, so that's what it is. You know? If you know that you are a child of God and you have the authority to speak out, to deliver, uh, uh, and the Holy that, and the evil spirit has to listen. It's in the name of Jesus. It's in the authority that you carry. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, okay. One more question from Shani. Yeah. Go ahead, Shani. Yeah. Just to kind of, um, I just had a question. Somebody asked about the baptism. So about evil spirits, you can cast like a, a demon out of somebody. But I was told that if they're not baptized with the um, with the Holy Spirit, that's what they're speaking in tongues, baptized that. They're like an empty vessel, and demon can come right back in them. Is that true? Yeah, the evil spirit can come back in. Is it? Okay. Yes, if they're not baptized with the um, with the okay. Holy Spirit. Well, actually, um, I, I'm sure you learn more uh, when when we are learning about you know the authority of the believer and um, and so on. But uh, just to answer very quickly, um, well, uh, how, the the word. You know, in, in the word, the Greek word is demonized, meaning a person is oppressed by the evil spirit, and there are different degrees to being varying de degrees to being oppressed by the evil spirit. Some people can be fully controlled. Uh, some can be just it's just a weight, it's just a heaviness, uh, and um, you know, demonized. Right. So the thing is this: that when a person is delivered, okay, that's what we are referring to. When a person is delivered, uh, uh, the demon is just uh, you know cast cast out. Okay. Well, if the per why should a person be oppressed again? If the person does something or or steps, um, uh, you know, steps out of the protection, legal protection that a person has, right, and dabbles in something to give a legal entry to the evil spirit, or maybe the person does not know the authority one carries, and because of ignorance, just allows the and not being discerning enough allows the spirit to oppress. Yes, it can happen. Whether you're baptized or not baptized, or you're spirit filled, it can happen. Right? It can happen, but it is not because of you know whether you're whether you're baptized or not. But it's a question of whether I willing willfully sinned and opened a door or whether I whether I stepped out of the legal protection that I have as a believer. Um, and then because of continued sin sometimes you know, a lifestyle, a continued sin, because of which I put myself in that territory. And I allowed the spirit to oppress me. To what degree? It depends. But this is how it happens. OK, so shall we call it a day? OK, so we'll, we'll stop here. Thank you so much. Good questions. Uh, good interaction, guys. Um, we shall stop here and uh, meet again um, later. God bless. Bye-bye.